Hello and welcome to the second video in a series where I'm looking at the Eagle 2 Pro um, imaging computer, uh, astrophotography computer supplied by Prima Luci Labs. Um, in the first video you would have seen me uh, unboxing and giving my first impressions of the, the unit which were fantastic. I mean it just feels really really well built, really well designed. Uh, it's got all the ports that I need, all the outputs, inputs, everything is, is really really good. So in this video I've actually attached it now to my Takahashi FSQ106. Um, it's clever, the uh, plus system as Prima Luci Lab calls it, um, has all tapped holes in the top and the bottom of the, the Eagle 2 and in the Prima Luci Lab plus compatible tube rings um, you, you've actually got holes all the way through. So you've got four holes in the tube rings, two of them go all the way through, two are tapped so in the two holes in the tube rings that um, are not tapped, they you put a, a cap-headed bolt all the way through and it fixes into the uh, the bottom of the computer. So it's solidly fixed to the top of the tube rings, which is really, really nice. Um, I had hoped to fit guide tube rings to the top of the, uh, the computer as well, but there's a bit of an issue with that as um, I've highlighted in another video as well but um, I'm now using an off-axis guider an attic off-axis guider as uh, you'll see on here so it's not an issue I don't need the, the guider now so I've got now connected also my Sesto Senso um, focus controller it's a focus motor and controller all built in and obviously my CCD my uh, EFW3 so it's all connected up to this unit you've got the uh, 16 amp input um, cable here that, that's got a cigar lighter on the end of it cigar lighter socket type connector on the end um, I will be chopping that off and changing that and putting a, some crimp lugs and a fuse on the end of that but for now um, it's connected via that and I've got two 8 amps so there's two 8 amps and two 3 amp outputs so at the moment um, I've got two 8 amps one of them is um, connected via a splitter to my CCD and my filter wheel and the other one is connected to this Sesto Senso. So I've got two fair spare 3 amp outputs for the other bits that I need. So at the moment um, I'm really really happy with how this all fits and, and how compact and every, the, the way that it makes everything feel. It makes it feel really really um, sort of self-contained so I haven't got bits of leads hanging off everywhere. I will be um, shortening the leads down so that everything's all nice and tidy. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and plug the unit in and what you'll see when the unit first powers up you get a bleep and um, what that bleep is telling me is that the you'll see a, a little LED on the side there and what that LED is for uh, it just shows that the unit's on standby it's not actually powered on uh, but it's on standby and the reason it sits in standby is because you can use a, a, a wake on LAN system on it. So if you connect it via um, a Ethernet cable to a LAN, you can actually use software and then you can use wake on LAN. So you can power it down so it's just in standby and then power it back up remotely. Um, that's a, a nice little feature. I, I probably will be using that. But um, yeah, I mean, it's great. If you're using it out in the field, obviously it's not going to be an issue. But if you're uh, using this in an observatory, then the, the wake on land feature is quite good. So on this side of the um, Eagle 2, you've got a power on and off button. So I'll just power it on. Uh, you'll hear it fire it up. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll come back and we'll have a look at the, the software and, and how it all runs. So that's it powered up and it, it just fires away. And then once the, the uh, wireless network is established, uh, you'll get another bleep. So I'll come back and we'll have a look at the software. And welcome back. So let's have a little look over the Eagle 2 and the, the software and how it runs. Uh, but first, it's worth mentioning that the Eagle 2 actually has two connection modes. You can connect to it using access point mode or host mode. Uh, it comes default set up for access point mode and this mode doesn't need an internet connection. It, the Eagle 2 generates its own wireless network. Uh, with a fixed IP address internally and all you, you need to do then is connect directly to the Eagle 2 without the need for any internet connection with 
uh, whichever device you're using be it an iPad or a laptop or even a, a mobile phone uh, so long as it's running Windows um, remote desktop you can connect to it uh, host mode uses an existing network so if you you're running it in an observatory or at home uh, you can connect to that network in using host mode and the network will then give the uh, Eagle 2 an IP address and you can then use the internet for downloading all your software such as sequence generate or EQ mod um, and you can stay in that mode or you can switch back to AP mode but the AP mode is great for if you're out in the field where you don't have an internet connection so that's probably the mode that you'll use most. Now to run either you will need to download and install uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop. It's an application that's free from Microsoft. It will run on um, a Windows machine, on a PC, it will run on a Mac, or on an iPad, a mobile phone, run on anything. And once you've downloaded it, you need to set up a connection. Now I've got two connections here because I've run mine in host mode to download the software on. But the AP mode connection is the one that we'll look at. Um, so when you set up the connection, you can call it whatever you want to call it. The default IP address is 192.168.137.1. Default username Primalucci Lab and the password is the password that came in the box with the Eagle 2 on a piece of paper. Once you've set that information up, what we need to do is to connect to the Eagle 2 on the wireless network. So when you turn it on, it will generate this network, Eagle 2 Pro and this will be the, the number of your unit. Connect to that, again put in the, the password if it needs it uh, that came with your Eagle 2, then you're actually connected to it. Double click on your remote desktop connection and this is the main Eagle 2 screen. Now on this screen, um, the first box that pops up is the select power source box. This isn't that critical, but it's a nice little feature where you can set the size of your power supply either a 5 amp power supply a 10 amp power supply because these are the two default ones that are supplied by um, Prima Luci Lab or battery now it's probably more ideal in battery mode because you can set the amp hour rating of your battery and the current charge status of your battery and all it will do then is monitor the power consumption and it will warn you when your battery is getting low so it's quite a nice little function if you are working out in the field and you're not sure how long your batteries are going to last it will give you an indication of how long they are lasting if you're on a, a power supply uh, it will just give you a warning when you're approaching the current limit of the power supply so again quite a nice little feature so here i'm running on a 10 amp power supply and just click ok so when you look at this image it's actually a plan image of the eagle 2 so here are the two wireless um, antennas you've got your four USB 3 ports now the USB 3 ports are not switchable you can name them just by clicking on them and then it comes up with a box and you can call it whatever you want and just click OK uh, but you can't switch the USB 3 on and off you've got the two modes that I mentioned earlier access point mode and host mode where you just click on and you, you set up um, and run it in whichever mode you want to use and then here we've got the four USB 2 ports. Now these ports you can switch on and off just by clicking on them. That port will go on, that port will go off. And again, you can just click on it and call it whatever you want. Just type in your name, click OK, and then that's called whatever you like. The power supply in, that keeps track of the voltage in. Um, not much you can do with that. I mean, that just opens up if you click on it. The, the original select power source box and these are your four outputs you've got the two 8 amp outputs and the two 3 amp outputs you'll see here I've got my CCD and filter wheel connected to one um, and my focus are connected to the next so if I click on my filter wheel you you may hear it going on um, and it turns green and you'll see the power consumption reading there changes to show you how much power is being drawn total and that's the same for all these um, all these outputs here. The bottom three here, these are the dew heater and flat panel outputs. You can use either one for 
any that you like and if you click on them you get off and on again but also if you click on the um, the name you can you can name it but then if you right click it comes up with this little pop-up box um, you can name it here if you want and you can also set a particular voltage if you know a heat that or a voltage output that you want for example for a flat panel uh, say I want 7.2 volts so I can type that in there and it will be on 7.2 volts so when I switch it on it will preset it at 7.2 volts and then it will monitor the current and the watts nice little feature I look, quite like this idea and then you can just turn it off if you want um, that's about it there so if we now look at the advanced settings when you open up the advanced settings box there's some nice little features here I mean obviously you've got your access point mode Wi-Fi information and you've got your host mode Wi-Fi information so you need to fill them independent on your own um, passwords and so on the power button function that actually determines what happens when you push the power button so you can either have it go on to standby you can have it restart or power off the defaults power off and, that, and that's what I use it on so if I click the power button it just shuts the machine down the reconnect is if you you just want to reconnect to the device if it's been sitting idle or you've switched the machine off the machine that you're using to access the Eagle 2 yeah you, know, you can just connect reconnect and it will reconnect to the, um, the USB and you can also reset the USB 2 hub now the configuration after startup and the configuration before shutdown feature is quite a nice one what this does is you can enable it and it will um, start up or shut down with these ports in this particular um, configuration so to give you an example we've got the regulator ports which is your heater outputs your due heater outputs so you see they're all on 0 volts well if I know that when I switch on I want to have my um, OTA heater on at 7 volts all that I do is I go into that I've got my 7.2 volts I have a look at my advanced settings I click load from current and you'll see that it inputs at 7.2 volts so whatever your current configuration is of all the inputs and all the outputs you click load from current configuration it puts them in and once you enable that's exactly the state that those ports will be in when you switch the unit back on and the same um, on shutdown as well it may be that you need to shut something off um, so for example shut a CCD down before you switch um, the machine off so you can do that as well in there it's quite a nice little feature again um, everything else as you'll see there I mean whilst this is uh, a splash screen that comes up it's actually just Windows 10 it's Windows 10 enterprise version which is um, essentially a, a pro version but it's stripped down it, it lets you take everything out so that you, you it's not full of bloatware it's not slowing the machine down it's a very very good version of Windows 10 um, when you first look at it you'll probably probably think oh my god there's nothing there all it comes with is card to CL PhD2 nothing else is on there um, I've downloaded all the other stuff so sequence generator pro uh, EQ mod pole master oculus uh, Sesto Senso, uh, you when you connect to your network in um, host mode, you can then download and install all your software as though you would on any other Windows 10 machine. It runs exactly the same as any other machine. So, by way of example for that, if we go back to the main screen, uh, I'll turn on my focus controller as well, so you can see now I've got my CCD and filter wheel, and my focus controller switched on. So if I go to Sequence Generator Pro, which is version 3, and all the ASCOM drivers all run exactly as they would on any other version of Windows 10, I apply a profile to Sequence, I'll just put my default, default profile. So you'll see here is all my ASCOM devices. I can connect to my filter, uh, my um, Sesto Senso focus controller. I can connect to my filter wheel. I can connect to my attic camera so you see with a filter wheel for example there's all my filters so I can select red 
so it's actually resetting now so there you go so that's on a red filter um, I've connected to my um, Sesto Senso so if I do go to if I drop that to 500 you'll see that drops down to 500 so so it's all connected all running um, obviously the camera's on I mean we can take an image on the camera if we want but it, it all works exactly the same way uh, so we'll just take an image with the it's connected to my attic 16200 um, so this will just download an image but yeah it all runs everything works exactly the same as it would uh, on a normal Windows 10 PC I, I've had no issues no problems with um, with drivers or anything like that the whole thing seems to work perfectly well it's um, it's really good my first impressions of it when I first opened it up were superb um, and I think using it in the, in the way that I am now you, you know um, I'm, I'm just more than happy with it it just runs like a normal Windows 10 PC but in a in a ultra compact um, format so I hope this has been helpful I mean again you can just close all these down as you normally would shut it all down get back to the main screen or you can just open up any of your other software so I hope this has been a, a useful little introduction I will do a, another video um, when I'm using it in anger so to speak so when I've got it um, connected on my mount and uh, can start doing some imaging so I'll post another video then in the meantime if there's any questions you, that you've got if there's any specific things that you want to know can it do how does it do it then feel free to leave a comment in the comments box below um, and I will see you in the next video bye